Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Thursday, March 28th, 2024. It is 315 Eastern Time PM as I'm speaking and recording. Glory be to God. Praises be to God for every single one of you that are listening to this, watching this, however long you may watch it, as long as you get a couple scriptures in you, again, total success. And I continue to thank each and every one of you as we continue to grow, not just not just on this channel, folks, but just growing in our understanding of who we are in Christ. Uh, Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians, um, I think it's in chapter three, Paul's prayer to the church in Ephesus is something I've been praying every morning now for probably over five, six weeks. And it has really, really transformed me, guys. I don't know right off the bat, maybe tomorrow I'll put it in there. I'm pretty confident it's in Ephesians chapter three. If you would just read that and read Paul's prayer for the church, I think I, I'd encourage you to read that, make that part of your daily. Again, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not because I can't. Why can't I? Because the Bible says it's the Holy Spirit who teaches you all things. Yes, the Bible says we're going to encourage one another, support one another, edify one another, strengthen to, to do all that, walk beside one another. So that's all I try to do, folks, is just let God speak in me and through me and praying that if at least one person takes something away from each video, even if it's just me, again, total success. But praise be to God for every one of you. Today's title, folks, just like our, our book, uh, 365 Devotions for a Peaceful Spirit, today's title, Peace Seekers. Peace Seekers. And I don't know about you all, but the more I think about this, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. He gave it to us. <sighs> What did we do with it? Where where did it get to? How did we lose it? And like like our background, look at this. You know, look look back in Genesis, the temptation, the fall of man. And guys, first off, the Bible does not say it was an apple. The Bible doesn't say it was an apple. It was just the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But if you go back, you find yourself wanting to kill some time, so to speak. But reading the reading the word of God is not killing time. Reading the word of God is eating, is glorifying God. The fall of man back in Genesis, Satan did not hold Adam and Eve at gunpoint. He did not threaten them. He did not trap them or trick them. He just spoke. He spoke a lie, and they believed it. And there was the fall of man, just from obeying a lie from the enemy. Folks, please let this speak to you. If what you're hearing right now in this battlefield, this battlefield between these two ears, this brain, your thoughts, your mind, only you, only you and the power of the Holy Spirit can control that. I can't, I wish I could get in your head. I wish people could get in my head sometimes and get in there and throw out some stuff that don't belong. But the only thing that can do that is the word of God and the Holy Spirit. But Satan likes to get up here between these two ears and plant them lies in our heads. And we would so much rather believe that. We would rather believe what Satan says than, than to believe what the word of God says. And folks, we've got to change that. We have got to stop that as Christians, if you're going to call yourself a Christian, then believe the word of God. Don't just say I'm a Christian thinking that's going to keep you out of hell because it's not. The Bible does not say that. The Bible does not say if you declare you're a Christian, you're saved. It doesn't say that, folks. There's a lot in there. We got to, man, it's time. It is way past time. We got so much authority in us. Peace seekers. Let me keep going here, folks. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> um, peace seekers, our scriptures today, I've got highlighted Psalm 119, 1 through 3. And I'm just going to go ahead and read that, folks. But please click on that. And they've also got verse 165. Let me just read what I've got printed out here. Um, this is Psalm 119, 1 through 3 in the New Living Translation. Verse 1 reads this. Joyful are people of integrity. Think about that. Joyful and peaceful, they're... I think they're relatives. I don't believe you can have one without the other. Joyful are people of integrity. Integrity, it's its being the same person all the time. Who are you when people aren't watching? Who are you when nobody else is around? If you're the same when you're by yourself as you are when you're around people, that's being integrity. Do you stick true to your word? That's integrity. Do, is your yes a yes and your no a no? That's integrity. Do you believe the word of God? That's integrity. So joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. And guys, that, that could sound so so hard and brutal, like, oh, I got to follow these guidelines. I got to follow these rules. That's, man, that's not what God's saying. God is not saying that, folks. Again, the, all scripture is profitable. This is Psalms. This is before Jesus came and gave his life for us. 
So keep reading, keep reading. New Testament is so powerful. It's all powerful, but we need to understand that the old covenant is obsolete. Jesus eradicated that. The word of God says that, not Todd's opinion. Jesus said that I have made the old covenant obsolete. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts, with all their hearts. With uh, Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those who seek him must believe that he is. And he rewards those who, who do what? Who diligently seek him, diligently with all your heart. They do not compromise with evil. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't compromise. They, they listen to the voice of the shepherd and they follow that voice. They don't follow the voice of that nasty defeated foe that's now already under our feet. Amen. And they walk only in his past. That's the path of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We got a two-parter, actually a three-parter today, folks. We got the Trinity today. Got a little paragraph here by Francois Fenelon. Writes this. Resign every forbidden joy. That's repent. If it's a forbidden joy, if it doesn't glorify God, resign it. Get rid of it. It's got to go. Restrain every wish that is not referred to his will. Everything you do, do it all for the glory to God. Is, is us doing this video, is this glorifying God? Absolutely it is. If I get off here and watch a, a ha hacker slasher movie film, is that glorifying God? No. If I run up here at the liquor store and slam down an AT, no. Guys, we know because of the knowledge of good and evil in us, we know right and wrong. We just got to, and are we perfect every day? No, folks, we're not perfect every day. We got to understand that. But we cannot condemn ourselves because of Romans 8 and 1. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We just got to know, and when the Holy Spirit convicts you, just man, just quit doing it. Just quit doing wrong. Just quit doing wrong. Um, banish all eager desires, all anxiety. Desire only the will of God. God's will is not for you to live in fear and anxiety, folks. Seek him alone and you will find peace. Seek him. Seek him alone and you'll find peace. If you're not finding peace, you're not seeking God. You're seeking the things of this world. You're seeking answers in the world instead of answers in the word. Amen. Our second half is out of God calling. Take no thought for tomorrow. Rest in God's presence brings peace. If you're resting in his presence, you are in peace, folks. God will help you. Desire brings fulfillment. Peace, like a quiet flowing river, cleanses, sweeps all irritants away. You shall be taught. Continue these prayer times, even if they seem fruitless. We've said that multiple times. Force yourself, even if your heart is not in it, folks. Even if you're like, I don't know why I'm doing this. I just don't feel like doing this today. I'll catch tomorrow's video. Guys, I've been there. It's like, you know what? I don't want to do this morning's devotional. I don't want to read the verse of the day. I don't want to continue this uh, lesson plan I've been doing. I force myself, guys, because I know if I don't, I know I've already, I know I've already listened to Satan's lies and given him a grasp of that day. We, we got to stop doing that. Force yourselves, force yourselves to want nothing but God and all God's got to offer for you. Um, the devil will try by any means to stop you. Any means, folks. Who heed him not? What's the word say? Resist the resist the devil, and he will flee. You have you have to resist him. He didn't say call to me and ask Satan to leave. God says you resist him. You resist the you resist Satan. You resist the devil. You resist those lies. You resist the enemy. You you resist that fruit that he's trying to offer. It. You resist him, and he will flee. Amen. He will say evil spirits may enter in. Heed him not. Don't give him a foothold, folks. Rest your nerves. But we, I think it's beautiful. It's been a while back. So I've been, one of the videos we did, you know, about count to 10. I said, I think if we could just count to seven, take a step back, take a breath, count to seven, focus on God, regroup yourselves. There's nothing wrong with doing these physical things if we have to do them. I remember one of the devotionals last year we read about the lady. She had, she kept an empty chair at her, wherever she was at, beside her bed, I believe it was, and kept an empty chair with her in the living room. And she just visualize that Jesus was sitting in that chair with her at all times. There's nothing wrong with that, folks. If that's what it takes, if these physical things is what it takes for you to transform this brain and get it away from the lies of Satan, this nasty fruit from that nasty tree that we chose to eat from, do whatever it takes. Just glorify God. Just whatever you're doing, just make sure you're glorifying God. Um, tired nerves. Tired nerves are a reflection on, not of, God's power. Hope all the time. 
Don't man, hope never quits, folks. Do not be afraid of poverty. Let money flow freely. God will let it flow in, but you must let it flow out. He never sends money to stagnate, to stagnate only to those who pass it on. And then we got a little poem here. Hang in there, folks. This is by Anna L. Waring. And it's a lot of thou's and these and those. So I'm going to try to do this justice and glorify God. The comfort of a mind at rest from every care thou hast not blessed. A heart from all the world set free to worship and to wait on me. Amen. Folks, again, look at our title, Peace Seekers. I know this is sounding repetitious. Who cares if it's repetitious? It's going to be repetitious until we get it pounded in here, till we chase out all the lies of the wicked one, the lies of the enemy. And again, in Ephesians, you know, it says that we are now seated together in Christ. I'm not going to stop repeating this. We are seated together right now, folks. We're still in these physical bodies. But if Christ is everywhere and God is everywhere, why can't he be here and in heaven at the same time? The word of God says we're seated together in Christ. So guess what? We're seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all powers, principalities, and rulers of darkness and wickedness of his age. And everything is under our feet. Everything is under our feet. But sometimes we want to give up our seat, come back down here spiritually into the carnal world and continue to just let Satan have his way with us. And guys, that's not something that any other human being on this earth can save you from or deliver you from. Why? Because it's already been done. The human being known as Jesus Christ, who was God the Father, God the Son, fully man, fully God, came here to deliver us from all of this. But yet we continue to want to give in to Satan. we got to stop, folks. Again, I say you, I'm talking about me because we're all part of the same body. We're the church. We make up the body of Christ, and he's the head over all things. And that completes the body. Amen. So, guys, thank you for joining me on this Thursday. Until tomorrow, hallelujah, Friday, please get along with the Lord. Have him reveal to you the lies, the lies that you were holding on to that Satan's feeding you. And help him, ask him to get rid of them. Like yesterday's, what was yesterday's title? Anybody remember from off the top of your head? Your burden bearer. Your burden bearer. Lies. Lies are heavy burdens. I think lies are one of Satan's favorite tools. I, I know lies are one of his favorite tools. So just ask God, yank these lies from me and get rid of them. Father God, I believe Jesus did what he did on the cross. I confess that. So guys, until tomorrow, Friday, the 29th, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see what the Lord says then. I love you guys. And I just now noticed that my microphone's way up there in the air, so I'm praying this sounds okay, because I'm not going to record this one. Until tomorrow, guys, enjoy. I love you all.